Hello and welcome to Rhino Zora's Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Not a great series up in Toronto by the Orioles. The Baltimore Orioles here. And to make matters worse, not only, let's say the bullpen kind of gave it up. And bullpen in some games, starters in another game. One starter actually pitched pretty well. Actually, two of them pitched okay. Grayson Rodriguez on the IL, along with Jacob Webb on the IL, and Heston Kerstad on the IL. Yeah, Mr. Holmes in New York. I say you got payback coming, son. Yeah. Or maybe we'll just take Judge out. How about that? If Kerstad can't play for the rest of the year, then you know what? Judge shouldn't. I mean, that may be... Over the top because Kerstad wasn't is nowhere near the home run hitter that Judge is, though he was trying to make a case where he should be considered that way. Till Mr. Holmes hit him in the head. And yes, I do think he was trying to. His shoulders were lined up before he started his movement. And point of him releasing the ball sure as hell looked like his shoulders were pointed that way, but that's okay. I'm still harping on that because I'm still a little pissed off. Especially because Kerstad can't play because he's still dealing with concussion issues. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm on MassInSports.com. Let's get to game one. Latest series against Toronto in Toronto. Baltimore Orioles 2, Toronto Blue Jays 5. Again, from Toronto, the Rogers Center is what they're calling it now. No longer the Sky Dome. Cows are leading off. This appears to be the go-to now, at least against a righty. Ofer, Kobe Mayo, pinch hit late. Get to that when I get to the... Let's get through the whole lineup first, and then I'll criticize Brandon Hyde. No hits for Mayo. Santander, Ofer, Kenderson, Ofer, O'Hearn, Ofer, Rutschman, Ofer, though he and O'Hearn did walk once. Rutschman actually scored a run as well. Mountcastle one hit. Jimenez one hit. Holiday a hit and RBI and a run scored. Slater a pinch hitting for Holiday. Walked once. And actually got an RBI because he walks with the bases loaded. Arias over. Now, the Orioles got that one run by Slater when he walked with the bases loaded in the eighth inning. Actually loaded the bases with no outs. Actually loaded the bases with no outs. Then, Brandon Hyde, in his infinite wisdom, and yes, he's taking a lot of criticism for this, decided, oh, I'm going to pinch hit for Jackson Holiday, who, if you see down here in the home run col column, Holiday actually hit a home run. That's what this 1-1-1 one, one, and one was for, for the hits, RBIs, and runs score. Yeah, you just hit a home run. Congratulations, kids. Now... Take a seat. Though at the same time, I don't think Austin, um, yes, Austin Slater is a drop-off. It's a righty for a lefty switch there. Again, I know Slater's the new guy, but it's, it's not as much of a drop-off as far as at-bat talent. But again, it's... Oh my God, how many times you got to pinch hit Brandon Hyde? Why does it seem like you do that so much? If you're losing and there's a runner in scoring position, you're going to pinch hit. Unless it's Rutschman, Santander, or Henderson. Which is very weird. Urias up next, out. It's like... Oh my God, you pinch hit for Holiday and Kowser. You didn't pinch hit for Arias? I mean, because there was a lefty on the mound, because the manager put a lefty in, outmanaged Brandon Hyde, because Brandon Hyde's like, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to move my lineup all around. Yeah, I'm getting Bruce Bochy again. Rah, I'm Brandon Hyde. Whatever. So you don't pitch hit for Ramon Arias. I mean, I, I I would leave Holiday and Kowser in there. They're, what's the word? 
hot, I guess. Not only for the game, maybe not for the game with Kowser, but for the past few games, they've been hot. Why would you take them out? I guess, I mean, I get it. Slater, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But Kobe Mayo in for Kowser? Kobe Mayo doesn't even have a hit yet. Are you kidding me? No, that's stupid. Hindsight got you on that one, Brandon Hyde. Or Hyde, 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 Hyde Sight got you on that one. Way too analytical. And yeah, I know I've been criticizing Brandon Hyde a lot when he does it. You know what? A lot of other people are starting to do it too. Mm -hmm. I may not be as dumb as I sound when I criticize him, huh? Yeah. I mean, the Kobe Mayo thing, just does, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, Kowser was in the middle of a 17-game hit streak. Yes, he didn't have a hit yet tonight. But with the bases loaded and one out, you have to give the guy a chance. You have to. It's just shit managing. That's all that is. It'd be one thing if, let's say, Brian McCann had started the game at catcher and you gave Adley Rutschman a day off and then you're, you're pinch hitting Adley Rutschman there. That's different. Kobe Mayo, again, he doesn't have a hit yet. And everybody's saying, oh, he's tearing up the minor leagues. Well, here's the thing about that. Minor league pitching, best way I think I can describe minor league pitching right now is it is absolutely garbage. It's garbage. Triple A pitching, they're probably single A talent, all of them. You know why? Because all the triple A pitchers are in the major leagues right now. Because there's so many injuries. And you know what? Half your double-A pitchers are also in the major leagues. Because there's so many injuries. That's why guys like Mayo are tearing up the minor leagues. Because the pitching is trash. There's just not enough pitching to go around. There just isn't. Arms are not holding up. So, of course, the Orioles lost this game. Yet, how many chances with the bases loaded and no outs... And you only got one run. I mean, you had Slater had a chance. Arias had a chance. Kowser had a chance. Or Mount Mayo had a chance. Santander had a chance. You had four chances with several, with a few outs for some of them. You didn't even get one hit. You got zero hits and one walk. Terrible. Terrible. <sighs> Albert Suarez got to start in this one. Yes. That's right. Was supposed to be Grayson Rodriguez. Nope. Injured list. Some kind of lat strain. They're trying to convey to everyone out there that this is not the same spot or severity of lat injury that happened a few years ago for Rodriguez where he missed over a month. Supposed to be very, very mild. He was warming up out in the outfield before he even went out to the bullpen to warm up before this start right here. And you could watch him throwing. He's not riding around in pain, but you can see him mouth. I don't feel right. So at least they kind of caught it early, right? So before there's lots of pain and it's huh, something don't feel right. So hopefully the recovery process isn't as long as let's say if something was injured and hurting a really bad <sighs> oh and yeah Jacob Webb also on the injury list placed on the injury list the same day so you're not going to see him in the series either very disappointing Suarez got to start he got like 15 minute notice to warm up which is kind of sucks for him but he goes five innings gives up two hits no runs Walks two, strikes out six. And you giant tool bags in the lineup couldn't get any runs. Of course, you know what? Prepare yourself, Michael Ice. You're going to get criticism here, too. Well, but not before. Brandon Hyde gets criticism. Enter Birch Smith to pitch the sixth inning and get only two outs before he is lifted because, well, because... Yes, Birch Smith did give up a hit and a run in the inning. So, 
It's not like, oh, he's pitching fantastically. Did strike out one of those outs. Enter Gregory Soto. Uh, I'm playing the matchups because I'm Brandon Hyde. That's what I do. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why you didn't get this asshole out of there before you allowed him to face that many batters. He faces six guys. Face six batters. I mean, this is the line he gave up for six batters? Why'd you allow him to face the sixth one? Who cares? Fake an injury. Throw somebody else in there. I don't care if they haven't warmed up fully yet in the bullpen. You know what? They gotta be pitching better than this jackass. This cost you the game right here. Either putting Gregory Soto in or trading for Gregory Soto. I, I've looked at Soto's numbers with the Phillies, and he just he just didn't get into many games. And everybody's like, oh, well, it's because I got a lot of pitchers. Okay, sure, they have a lot of pitchers. Well, so did the Orioles. If, if Soto's not getting into the games, that means he's not as good as most of the other guys there. Why would you trade for him? Why would you trade pitch, pitching prospects for this guy? I don't think you need another left-handed arm that much. I didn't. I didn't. Especially, you sent Keegan Aiken down. This jack... No way. Looking at Soto's numbers for the whole year, did I think this jackass was going to be better than Aiken. There's no way in hell. I'm, I don't need to look at the numbers. I don't need to look at the numbers. We know Ke Keegan Aiken. We've seen Keegan Aiken for many years here. Soto has not been pitching better than Keegan Aiken. He just hasn't. Okay, fine. Trade for him. I don't know why you're getting giving up a pitching prospect that you actually like. But, I mean, okay. Fine. Go ahead. Put this guy in there. And you know what? Leave his ass in there to face six batters and give up four hits, four runs, all earned, walk one, and then strike out one. I don't, wh why? Why did you leave the jackass in there? <sighs> Look, I mean, everybody wants to get on Craig Kimbrell. It's time to get on Brandon Hyde and Michael Elias for keeping this Soto ass all around. Because here comes Craig Kimbrell for the, I guess this is the seventh inning, right? Because you're on the road, so you only pitch eight innings Soto. Here's Craig Kimbrell pitching one full inning, getting two more outs in Soto. But Kimbrell only gives up one hit. No runs, no walks, strikes out one. Yeah, what the hell is Soto doing here? Okay. Sino Perez finishes off the game, pitching the full eighth inning. Gives up one hit, no runs, no walks, strikes out one. All right, let's move on. Let's get to some good news. Yay, we won a game. Finally, we didn't, you know, get swept by the Toronto Blue Jays because that would be bad because Toronto Blue Jays are not even above 500. How can you not win the series against these jackasses? Shit-ass managing, that's why. And not very good GMing. I mean, second year in a row, the Orioles have been buyers at the market, and I, you look at at least one piece that, the, that Elias brings in, and it's like, why? I mean, you could say the same, same thing with Flaherty last year, who actually moved at the deadline again. Having a lot better year than, you know, he did here in Baltimore. Because he just, he did look terrible here in Baltimore. Terrible. And honestly, I didn't even know who the hell he was when they traded for him. Like, who the hell is Jack Flaherty? Who is that? This is not going to go. It's, it's the pressure. They're cracking under the pressure. Both Elias and Brandon Hyde are cracking under the pressure. Because it's their show now. Michael Elias is the head GM and Brandon Hyde is the, you know, the head coach. They call it a manager in baseball. He's the manager. He's the guy in the dugout making all the decisions. And they're cracking under pressure. Which is fine. It's going to happen when you're relatively young in your job. Especially if you get a, you know, a promotion. But at some point, we got to see some progression, you know. Learn from your mistakes and such. Baltimore Orioles 7, Toronto Blue Jays 3.
was Wednesday's game. And we're still in Canada. Cows are again leading off over, though he did walk once and score once, struck out twice. He's had success from the leadoff spot. It, he didn't hear for some reason. Santander, two hits, three RBI, scored twice. Henderson, Ofer, O'Hearn, Ofer. Slater, pinch hitting for O'Hearn later. He did walk once and then scored. O'Hearn actually also walked once himself. Rutschman has been actually getting moved down in the lineup. More towards the five hole. I don't know if that's because he thinks maybe he'll get him less at bats and a little bit more rest or... They think we'll come through with more RBIs. Rutschman one hit, one run scored. Mountcastle just one hit. Eloy Jimenez. It's weird how some of these trades worked and some of these trades did not work. And I guess that's what happens when you make like six or seven trades. I, I lost count after a while of how many trades Michael Ice made at the deadline. Eloy Jimenez, two hits, two RBIs, a run scored. Mullins pinch running late. Did not receive an at-bat. Jackson Holiday a hit. Two RBIs, a run scored. Mayo over. some point, Mayo's got to go. You, you just can't carry him. You just can't carry him doing nothing. Doing nothing except costing you runs. Because how many errors has he made? Yeah. Arias over. I said you can afford to carry him, too. Zero production from your third base spot. Well, that's what happens when Westbrook's out. Mount Castle Jimenez with doubles. Santander, two home runs. Holiday with one. Yeah, Holiday homered in three straight games, didn't he? Weird. Errors. Mayo throwing. Trevor Rogers gets a start in this game. Much better performance than his last performance. Yeah, what do you expect when it's like you get to the team and then like 15 minutes later, hey, go start against the, you know, the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Again, great managing. Goes five full innings, gives up seven hits, three runs, two earned runs. Walks two, strikes out two. Not the greatest line you're ever going to see, but you know what? Even with the error. Only three runs scored. You'll take that. Because your offense got to do more than three runs. It has to. You're not going to win shit unless you get more than three runs. Burt Smith in for the sixth inning, pitching the full sixth inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Cano in for the seventh, pitching the full seventh. Does give up two hits, eh, but no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. CNL Perez in for the eighth. Pitching the full eighth inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Sir Anthony Dominguez, the one pitcher from the Phillies they got that was good. Pitching the full ninth inning, no, not a save situation because it was a what, a four, four, five run lead? Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, four run lead. Pitching the full ninth inning does give up a hit, but no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Come to game three. Yeah, this is these are garbage time runs. You can see here in the ninth inning, four runs. That's because the Toronto manager didn't put anybody that was any good in the you know to pitch the ninth inning. Zach Pop went in there. You remember Zach Pop? Yeah, that's why we got rid of him. Baltimore Orioles six, Toronto Blue Jays seven. Cows are finally hitting again from the leadoff spot. Two hits, four RBIs scored once. Santander, one hit. Henderson, Ofer, though he did walk once. O'Hearn, two hits and a run scored. Rutschman, one hit. Mountcastle, a hit, a run scored and walked once. Probably the lowest performance totals for Ryan Mountcastle in Toronto ever. Don't know what happened. Probably we talking about it too much. Probably what happened. The baseball gods were giving you a gift and you spat right in their face. Holiday moved up to seventh. We'll see if he stays up there. Actually, I think he was kind of what was he hitting between ninth, between ninth and seventh. That's yeah. 
We'll see if he does go up a little bit more. Or maybe against right-hander go up a little bit more since he is a lefty. No hits, but he does get, does get an RBI and a run scored. Yeah, that's what happens with fielder's choices and stuff, such. Mullins a hit, an RBI, a run scored. Arias over, though he did walk once and score once. Eloy Jimenez pinch hitting late over. Pinch hitting with some runners on and just couldn't get it done this time. Uh, and Jimenez not hitting tonight because can't really play the field and you want to give Santander some time off so you had him DH and Kowser was playing left O'Hearn playing right since Jimenez is around he's kind of you know fighting for DH opportunities not that he really had any to begin with and you didn't work on a bench Mountcastle against Toronto because that would just sound stupid but Mullins in center so yeah Facing our old buddy Kevin Gosman. Probably the best performance he's had against his former team ever. Mullins with a double. Santander also with a double. Kowser with a home run. Holiday with a throwing error. Yeah, Gosman went eight innings and only gave up three hits. He has never pitched that well against us. Eight innings. You you were you were taking bad at bats. You had bad at bats. That's all it was. You had bad at bats. Dean Kramer gets a start in this game. You know, at the same time, yes, he's given up a bunch of runs, but at the same time, you know what? Like like if your offense would do things, it'd be much easier to pitch. Kramer goes four and a third of an inning. Gives up four hits, five runs, five walks, strikes out six. It's weird to see elevated strikeout number. Like more than a strikeout in an inning, but you still walk in five and giving up four hits. Now, which game was this? One of these games, Hyde was thrown out. Was it the umpire? The, the balls and strikes, they're out of control. I mean, there was one game in this series that I swear to shit. Some of these balls they were calling off the off the outside part of the plate were like a foot off. I swear it looked like they were a foot off the plate. And he's calling them for a strike. Like this old as shit umpire got white ass hair. It's like, and you ain't got no glasses on. You kidding me. Don't give me that garbage. That's the problem. You got umpires that are older than dirt. He call him balls and strike. He can't see without a damn mask on. You put a mask on, of course he can't see the strike zone. Ridiculous is what that is. Keegan Aiken comes on in relief of Kramer. Back up here with the big club. Pitches one and a third inning. Gives up two hits, two runs. He hasn't pitched since he's been sent down, which is kind of, that's probably part of the problem why he actually gave up runs. Didn't walk anybody, struck two out. I mean, like, almost a week without pitching. Yeah. First of all, like, like, why does he not pitch at all? What the hell are you doing, Buck Britton? I mean, let the guy throw one inning at some point. Holy shit. Are you an idiot? Sunday. He should have pitched at least one inning Sunday because the Orioles had an off day Monday. Keegan Aiken wasn't going to have to pitch. For the Orioles Monday, so he should have pitched for the Tides Sunday. Just to get some damn work in. But no, that's okay. Shit-ass managing. That's what this is. Brian Baker also back up here with the club. Webb and Rodriguez go to the injured list. So Suarez goes into the rotation. And then you have uh, two empty spots in the bullpen. So that's how that's working. Also pitching one and a third of an inning. Does give up a hit, but no runs, no walks. Strikes out two. Oh my God, Giovanni Soto. Gregory Soto. There are too many guys named Soto. It's very hard to keep him. Gregory Soto. Pitches a full inning, the eighth inning. Oh my God, he didn't give up a run. Holy shit. (sighs) 
pitching again, pitching the full eighth inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, one strike. Really, the key in this game is you allowed Kevin Gosman to pitch eight innings against you. Terrible, terrible. Oh, taking a look at this article here, written by Rock Kubatko. This is where I'm getting the information on Rodriguez, Kerstad, and Webb. So no, I just didn't magically pull this out of air, and it's my information. It's I'm getting this from other people, and you know, professionals in the business. Rock Kubatko here. Let's get this schedule and wrap this up and get the hell out of here before I start really yelling at people. Today is Friday, so no off day. Now there is hurricanes moving up the, you know, I don't know where it is, but it's, it's around, it's between Baltimore and Tampa Bay right now, I think. Or, you know what, I don't, it's raining a lot here, and I know it's because of the hurricane system somewhere around here. So we think that the game's going to get in, I don't know, I mean, I know they're in a dome down there, but... Oh, man. Depends on how strong the hurricane is, you know? Orioles should already be in Tampa Bay. I haven't... I don't know about their flight. I mean, it should have been last night. But who knows with this weather, really. Honestly. For Friday... Well, Jesus. Where am I at? Yeah. Talking about... Orioles should be in Tampa Bay right now. The three-game series, Friday's game scheduled for 6.50, Saturday's game scheduled for 7.15, Sunday's game scheduled for 1.40. You're so annoying, I swear. And then an off day, Monday. Yay, off day, woohoo! So, that is going to do it for this edition of Rhino's Oro's Report. Stay tuned for Monday. And I will talk about the series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino and this is Birdland.